Hey everybody, it's John from Focological. I wanted to make a video today uh, about how to keep your Podio app clean. Um, when you're building out a Podio app and you're using Globiflow and other functions in it, um, it can start to get messy. And there's many times I've come into a Podio workspace and opened up an app and I've been like, ah, this needs a clean up. Because um, the cleaner it is for your uh, employees to look at, and your users to look at, um, the more productive they will be. Um, this video is actually in my uh, Globiflow, Globiflow Basic course, um, which uh, is out. Uh, there's a link in the description below, so check that out. There's over two hours of videos that aren't on YouTube. Um, so go check that out. But let's, um, yeah, let's get started and um, take a look at how to keep this clean. So the first thing is, is just app name. Um, and so if you come up here to the wrench in an app and you go to app settings, um, then you've got the app name and the item name. So uh, this is something I talk about in the course is that the, the item name uh, needs to be different. Because if I cloned an app, um, I'm just going to clone this one app. And then I come into here and I go to app settings. And I was like, all right, we're going to name this one uh, monkeys. Well, in Globiflow, when I'm using the get referenced function, it's not pulling the app name in the item in the field tokens. It's pulling um, the item names. So if I was to pull this up in Globiflow and I'm like, okay, I get reference an item in the monkey app. Uh, okay, what fields do I want to use? It's going to show project as being the title before the field name. And if you've got two apps where the item names are project, then it's going to be very confusing. So always make sure that you are setting a unique app name and a unique item name for all of your apps. Um, the next one is to pick the right view. Um, I am a sucker for a good table view. So I use table view all the time. That's what I just prefer to have um, there. Now app descriptions and instructions for creating an item, they're great to fill out, especially if you, if you have a lot of people working in your organization and in your workspaces. Uh, it's just very helpful for them to have that information um, there. Uh, the advanced tab, um, you can't, like if I, if it's a, uh, like a background functioning app that I use for automations, um, I usually have these three turned on, but um, uh, don't let members add, edit, and disable comments. Those three will limit your Globiflow abilities inside that app, so don't have them turned on unless you really need them. Okay, so table view should now open up. And so over here on the left, I've got views. Now, every single time that you add a category field to an app, you go modify template and add a category field that adds a view here for you, um, which I frankly find annoying. Uh, that's me. Um, so what I recommend is always keep these clean, delete them if they're not actually ones that you've created. Um, and then always have uh, the first view created. Now, depending upon what the type of app is, um, I always like to call it like an active view. Let me refresh this. So what I'll do is I'll come into like, this is a project one here and I'm gonna filter down and I've got status. And so I'm going to only choose the ones that are active. So completed is not active to me. When I hit completed, it actually, um, well, in this one, it doesn't go anywhere, but um, it's no longer important to me. The work is done, I don't need to see it. Um, so having just these three set is my active view. Now before I save the view, I want to point something out here. You can adjust what columns show up here. Like maybe we don't need the email and the phone number to show up in the list view because if we were going to call them, we're going to click into that item anyways and figure out more details. So what I could do under options is I can remove those columns. So it's only showing me the information that's important uh, at a glance, right? Uh, steps, I don't need to see the sales record, I don't need to see that. So now these are the most important pieces of information and I have them right here. So I can save the view. And I'm gonna call this uh, active projects. So now I've got my active view. I'm gonna make sure that it's in team views. If it's in private views, nobody's gonna be able to see it. And then uh, I could split it by something. So I can split by status. So now I know I've got four active projects. One of them's new and three of them in progress. I can click on these and then get even down more granular detail. Now, I do want to point out this little button here is the default view. How do you make a view the default view? Well, if I make another view, um, and let's just say show me 
you know, all the steps. And I'm just going to save this view. I didn't clean it up here, but that's fine. Just for example, steps, steps. So if I was to take this view and just click and hold and move it up, and then move it to the top position, it becomes the default view. So whatever one that you want to be, your default view should just be at the top. Um, like I have active projects and it's at, at the top. Now, uh, the last piece here uh, is just um, editing. So when you have a view and you might want to change it, like uh, I didn't put in sorting. So let me go ahead and fix that. Um, I, if I was to come and just start sorting it right now and picking something, maybe I want created on oldest first. Um, because this is an active view, so if it's been there for the longest, then that might be something I want to take care of. It's giving me the save as function. So I can save as and I can overwrite the current view. What I usually like to do just to, you know, keep myself sane, I enter into edit mode, then I will do change the sorting, and then I just have to hit the save button. It prevents me from saving as the wrong view. It just always makes sure that, okay, I'm editing the active one, so let me go in and edit it, and then I'm good to go. Um, the last piece that I tend to do, um, for an app is I want to make sure that the, uh, layout options are set up to make sense. So if I come into layout options, it gives me three types of layout. So the badge layout is, uh, let me show you, is this view right here. So this is the badge layout. Okay. Um, and then, uh, the card layout is this one. Okay, so it's what information is showing on this card, what information is showing on this um, badge, and then the reference view is how it shows up in other apps that are referencing to it, or this app references from it at the very bottom of the screen. So I always like to go in and I don't use badge layouts or card layouts very often, but if, you know, I did have that here, like actually, you know, I could do a nice card layout here for Kaban board. Um, which is what the, the card view is. Um, but I definitely always update the reference. So client name, the status is great to know. Uh, I can put the steps in there and then the due date. You know, last edited by is nice to know. So I can save that. And then when I come into a sales record that has created a project record um, and I go down to the bottom, I can see right here. So it's in progress. Uh, it's currently on the create website step. There is no due date set on it, and it was last edited by this person. And this shows you, you know, what it was created. So, and I can click on that, and it will open up. So, this same thing here. Here's the sales record. If I went into the sales record app and edited their layout options, so maybe I could do name, status, um, last edited by. If I wanted to put, you know, the phone and the email there, that could be nice. So, if I come into the projects app. When I go back to Tabby, I can now see that my changes are here. So I've got phone number and email address pop up right there on the related view. Or related view. So those are the things that I do to make sure that an app is nice and clean. So remove all the default uh, views that Podio throws up there every time you add a category field. Um, and then um, make an active view and make it your default view. Change the columns in it sort it the way you want it to, um, and then um, clean up the layouts uh, in there and the app settings too. Always make sure that there's a unique app name and a unique item name for keeping your uh, sanity when doing Globy Flow. Um, but that's it. Um, I hope that you can check out the course that I created. Uh, we, Like I said, there's over two hours of videos that go uh, into very specific detail about every uh, Globiflow flow and action. So check it out. Thanks, everybody.